يعطيكم العافيه صبحكم الله بالخير كيف النومي هون يا جود سو فار سو جود اني بدي ديت سم سويمنج ذس مورنينج سم سويمنج اني جولف نو جولف اه وي غير دو سم جولف ليتر اون اهلا وسهلا فيكم ارحب فيكم يعني ام ريلي هابي تو بي هير ام براود اوف يو جايز اي هاد ذات اوبورتونيتي تو مي لاست نايت اند تشا اوفر دينر اند ام فيري امبريس ان سم اوف ذا برودكت ذات وي هاف سو ليتس جيت انتو وات وي تراين تو دو هير Uh, usually, I like to sit here in the back. I don't know if that would work here. It should work. It should work. So you guys remember when we were young, right? <laughs> we were very creative. What that tells you? We're all born naturally creative. Each one of us. We have great creativity inside of us. And as we grow and we start going to school, a typical school picture, huh? What happens? Life change, yeah? Some, some of the creativity gets away. Is it because of us? It's the education. It's the education system. Yeah, it's the education system. The whole ecosystem around the education system. So that's what really turned me on to really move to this job. Our CEO came to this region in 2004 and started meeting some of the kings and started talking about how can we change education? And talk to us about knowledge economy and 21st century learning. Most of our schools, they're not helping us to really learn the skills that we need to be successful in the knowledge economy. Who heard about the knowledge economy? Smart on knowledge economy? Good. What is it? You want to share with us? It's, uh, it's about um, cre- creating wealth from uh, uh, knowledge and intellectuals. Thank you. You said it very well. And we start seeing example. We start seeing example like Facebook, Google, right? They're, in, they're using their knowledge to make dollars. And this is why you guys are here. While we're into this, because we believe that each one of us, we have a lot of creativities, and we're all creative in a way, but if we get the right opportunity to show that, and we're like, and we start working with universities to help really move to the knowledge economy, and that's our job, working with governments to help them through education transformation, promoting entrepreneurship and scientific research, and longer-term work with research and development. So if you got those three elements, education transformation, innovation, entrepreneurship, and research and development, this is really a great way of moving to the future. So we believe into it, Intel invests a lot, and this is our vision going to the future. We have quite a few programs running in, in this region. I'm proud to be with you. Uh, today we're here about Intel Global Challenge. Intel Global Challenge is an international competition since 2005, uh, with UC Berkeley, uh, help try to help why we got into it as Intel because we start seeing a lot of great uh, research that takes place in the universities, but all of that research stay in the universities. We can have a lot of invention, but unless we bring that invention out of the universities, we take it to be commercialized, it will go in. So we start talking to professors and how can we help the university professors. We're not talking about the business schools because business schools are really good, right? They do good business plan, they do the great pitching, they're able to make that money. But how about the computer engineering, the computer science, the medical? This is why we get engaged. So it's a competition, it's an international competition. Only 30 teams from around the world, they get the opportunity to go to the Silicon Valley and take a one week of mentoring. And I hope this year, Four of us, we will have four seats from the Middle East, and I hope one of you here, you will get that seat. So, this year, there's three different tracks of Intel Global Challenge, and one is talking about social innovation. Uh, social innovation, this is what our group working. We're looking at global challenges, such as environmental challenges, right? uh, water, uh, pollution, anything that is, has a social impact. So if you have like, if you education transformation, some of you work in education transformation, I, some of you work in the health, probably your products, talking about the mining, right? So some of those products have a social impact. If it has a social impact, and you bring in our innovation, the second one, the second one, so this is the camera. You guys have so much microphone. Why is that so bad? Why are you guys doing with me? What is all this? <laughs> oh my god. I can't even get it on. Here you go. Does that work now? 
So strange strategic statistics, a shrewd, shrewd soul, Sarah, seven silver fish slices, does that work well? <laughs> How many of you believe this? <laughs> So social innovation, so if you have some, if your project into, has a social impact, I would recommend you to go into that track. And we're looking at some technology or innovation that it's the future, computing 2020. Disruptive technology that would come out, right? Uh, a lot of you, I see you on the uh, new technology uses, and where you are using the platform, the existing technology and the mobile, so you fit into that category. So in this, uh, well, we said, let's do that in the Middle East. We have been doing this, by the way, since 2005. It was kind of technology business plan competition with one of the NGOs in our region. But it was not scaling. Uh, the, this last year, we started working with Potential. We're using this platform. It's a really impressive platform. Uh, we said this year, let's target 50,000 people to be aware. Uh, have you guys been through the webinars? We've been through the webinars. So at least this is the minimum thing that we can do, right? So each one of us, we have a connectivity, we have a technology, and you can have a one hour per week, you go through a series of webinars, and we develop. We were targeting 2,000, but we reached more than 2,370 plus they have registered. And the idea is, if you have an idea to challenge the world, to solve those big challenges globally, please welcome. And that's why we're taking you through this series of learning until you are able to come up with and you submit a business model canvas. So not any more business plans, right? We're going through the business model canvas and we'll get the opportunity this afternoon to go deep with you. And we're happy with that because this is one of the latest, actually, investors, they like that a lot now. It's one bid, it talks about the whole thing of your program. So that's the Intel uh, business challenge. And I'm happy this year that we have a lot of uh, partnerships. So this needs a lot of efforts. It's just not only Intel alone, right? We need a lot of efforts, all of us, to work with that. And we need to work closely with universities because that's where research. We need to start working with incubators, angel funds, investors to make it. Also, governments need to help us as we go forward. Uh, my vision into that really, I want to for us to get the best four seeds from the Alam Arabi, and we go and compete internationally, and there's seven awards, we want to bring at least, we got four seats, right? Arab and Latin, we need two, two awards this year from you guys. Yeah? Inshallah. The more we win, the more I can get more seats than the Alam Arabi, al Qadim. So let me give it away from Intel, and this is, let's talk about a bit about innovation. What is entrepreneurship innovation? We hear that a lot, right? Innovation, entrepreneurship. Who can explain that to me? What's your perspective of innovation and entrepreneurship? I believe it's just innovation is when you try to solve a problem. That's, 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 that's part of the innovation, solving a real issue. Okay, go on. Another one? Uh, it's basically, if you think about it as execution times creativity. Any? Execution, creativity. creativity. How about entrepreneurship? Entrepreneur. You guys said it. That's the process of innovation. All of you have a great ideas, but that idea it needs to be you're looking at to solve a big global challenge. And you start identifying who is this the right user that you're solving that challenge. But your idea, we keep talking about idea. I got an idea. Is it everything? Ideas worth nothing, really. What makes it really successful is we've talked about that last night. Execution and implementation. So the process of innovation is all about you identify a big challenge, and the more global that challenge it is, you have big opportunities now to turn that challenge to an opportunity, and now you become an entrepreneur, because an entrepreneur now you're using, you're going beyond resources that you have. Yeah. All of you guys in the age of limited resources. Yeah. Al-Khamsin Khanat, probably that's that seed funding he's going to get to get him to his business to start. <laughs> but, the less of. So how many of you guys believe you're going to be an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur? Let me see, your, raise your hand. Oh, we got big hands. Sure. You don't believe you're going to be an entrepreneur? Listen, why are you here? <laughs> Listen, you're, you're one, huh? Well, I have a bad news to share with you guys. I mean, it's, it's not easy. Shadi, what is Shadi here? Yeah, yeah. yeah, is it easy to be an entrepreneur? 
Ah! Oh, can talk about that. <laughs> what is the fact? One third or 80% of those startups, they fail. Ooh, right? 80%. Yeah. Probably one third. I forgot the numbers, but it's not easy. Seven, cool. Recent well, study well, by Harvard, 75% hmm? fail within five years. Within five years. Here you go. So it's not easy. So what it is, it's an extreme sport. <laughs> Only the top can make it. Only the top can make it. <laughs> Are you guys top? Yes. Yes. Now how many can say yes now? Yes. yes. You're still going to be there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> MashaAllah. Bravo alaykum. I like this one. Uh, the way they look at entrepreneurship is just, just think about yourself. You're jumping out of the cliff and in the way down. you got to figure out how you're going to assemble your plane. That's... Okay. And I'm sure you guys are up to it, and I'm sure you can take that challenge. <laughs> Here's some of the challenges. I keep going back to the challenges because I keep wanting you to start thinking. Any business is about having a user needs. If you want to have a startup, you gotta have a customer. That customer, he needs he has a needs. And those are some of the identified global challenges that we see around. So when we start talking about by the way, what is the biggest challenge we have, we're facing in the Middle East? Unemployment. People say unemployment. Anything else? Corruption. 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 Water. Water. Water is the number one. A lot of us, we think it's corruption, politicians. I love politicians, they're good, right? <laughs> it's not about the politicians. We have more challenges than the politicians. It's one of those challenges. But water is one of the biggest challenges that we have here in the Middle East. In Saudi Arabia, in the national uh, top 10 challenges, they identify water was number one. And we've seen that a lot in some of the countries. Yeah. So if you guys come up with a solution, and you can start to use the technologies around to solve some of these challenges, and the more global the challenge, believe me, and with some great learning in how to pitch your solution and value proposition, Believe me, money is not an issue. A lot of investors will be behind you. They will, they will run for you. So start looking, and that's an entrepreneur. Start looking at those global big challenges that you see. Start looking at what we really have in the Middle East and start looking at it globally. And as an entrepreneur, you, well, that's why we love you. We love entrepreneurs because what they do, they take those problems and challenges and they turn them to opportunities. They turn them to opportunities. We love you. Investors love you because you solve, you solve all those challenges. Right? Now, I believe what happened to the text, but uh, what I believe we have a great talent uh, in the Middle East. We've seen them. I'm really proud of you. We've seen a lot of great talents. Some examples, Dr. Hassan Azazi, uh, 2012, 2011, uh, won the third grand award at Interglobal Challenge. Well, he was trying to solve the challenge about Marad Virus al Kept. In Masr, 50 million. I'm sorry, about 20 million, some big number, right? About 200 million worldwide, they're facing that challenge. So it's a social issue, and he used the nano gold technology to uh, be able to t do the testing because the test is really expensive. Not a lot of people can afford that test to know that they have that virus. So he was able to use a nano gold technology in a way that uh, people like uh, poor people would be able to uh, take that test and they know ahead of time they have that virus. Mazen yeah. Batarfi, uh, Mazen Batarfi, he's on one of the Saudi universities, Kabir Aziz University. He had the first uh, grand award and his project is targeting, his sky, it's called Skylight. He's using uh, solar energy to uh, regulate using the, the, the curtains in the houses to regulate electricity within the sign. So he's talking about environmental, he's talking about solar energy, those are like big stuff, right? This is where we've seen them and some of these projects. I've seen a project, for example, in 2006, one of the participants with us, Kitabi. Are you guys aware of Kitabi in Jordan? It's now one of the biggest education smart board system that we have in the education. Those kind of entrepreneurs out there, really big, their enterprises they're becoming. And I wish you guys all the best. Uh, you, you have the talent. I know you're passionate about your product. My last advice for you for today is you need to know how you will be judged. And that's the number one thing that when I start managing this project is for us to go and win, 
We need to know exactly what is the rubrics they want to assess us. So tomorrow, today you will have the opportunity. You have a lot of great people here who are passionate to help you and share their knowledge with you to develop your business canvas. And you, start, you will learn about how to pitch it within two minutes. But tomorrow the judges, each one of them, they will have a sheet like this. It's five criteria, and they will rate you from one to five. So they will start looking at the attractiveness of the business model cannabis that you have. They will start looking, do you have a strong value proposition that you've taken out? So start look into uh, your value proposition, business model, the team. The team is very important. Who's in your team? Try to show that. You have a ticket, you have a designer, you have uh, a salesman in the team. Try to show that in your presentation. And where are you? What's your progress up to date? Is it just still an idea that you're still dreaming or you have done some, some work toward that? All the best for you. And we'll see you tomorrow on stage with more confidence. Just go in. Just get in front of those people. Don't be afraid. You, are, you have a great idea. You've been working on it for a long time. I'm sure you are able to present it well. And all the best, you guys. And I'm happy to be here during the next two days. Wish you all the best, Karen. Khaled, shukran jazeelan. Yeah. Do we have any questions for Khaled? Nobody wants any more money, then. That was the, the question, eh? <laughs> Any more money? We're asking? We have investors coming. you got investors coming. We have investors coming. So somebody money. else, yeah? Your boss is so coming and he's got a big wallet. Uh, until we spend all the money already for the year. You spend it for the year? We spend it for the year. So when does the year begin? <laughs> begin in July. July. Okay. <laughs> so we call him on the 1st of July and say, Khaled, you got some more money, right? So, so yeah. far, we're going to... Uh, Call before that. Before that, yeah. Yeah. So, so, Make an appointment for the first of July, and then you're okay. You got the money. So grab my learning. My learning. Money is not an issue really in the Middle East. There's a lot of money exists. I did an ecosystem of where the money exists. There's so much money that exists. My advice to you guys is work in your value proposition, and believe me, you'll get the money. Okay. So any questions people have got right now for Khaled? Again, he's going to be around. Um, no. So I guess they'll just find you in the break and ask for money. Ah, here we go. Yeah, I, I think he just said that there is, uh, there are people that who are willing to invest, but uh, we don't know them. Okay. So. We, we, we do All right. So we'll, do you want to cover that now? We'll, 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 we'll cover that. We'll cover that as we go through. But oh, there's okay. a lot of like angel funders, venture capital that exists. So this is interglobal channel. What we're trying to do with this is not just take your ideas and make it that you have a business model. We want to make sure that we have you bitch in front of investors. So this is one of the goals that we have. But I'll talk to you in a, in a, every country that have different uh, organization. I'll talk to you specifically in some of the countries where you exist to help you match. <coughs> okay, so finances.